Hello and welcome to console training. My name is Alex Hughes and today we're covering my fixture splitter macro. So it's a little uh, little trick that I like to use. It's uh, one of those once in a show file things but it'll save you a lot of time. We've got some uh, Robin 600s patched and if we go to screen two and we bring up a fixture sheet, we'll see that each of them has got sort of five parts of them. You've got the, the point one which is uh, where all your pan and tilt information is. And then you've got just some, uh, some RGB and dimmer control. Some fixtures are a bit different. Sometimes they hide different things in different segments. Uh, and I've always found creating groups for them really frustrating. Yeah, we can go in and we can go auto create. We can select the group. Uh, by default, if we do it, we can see that all the point one parts are together. All the point two parts will also be together. And that's, it's good if we do them by fixture ID and yeah, I guess that works, but wouldn't be great if we could do it via a macro, make it really easy for us. So uh, that's what we'll do today. So we're going to create a little bit of a macro. So we're going to go uh, set user var because we're going to have it ask us a couple of questions. So we're going to go set user variable and then we're going to set our variable. Now, a lot of people would just start typing the variable, but because this is a, a macro that I run and because we're storing variables, I like to put my uh, initials before it so that I know that it's my macro and that no one else's show file, even if let's say someone else is running this macro, uh, no one else is going to interfere with my variables or anything. So I'm going to call it group split and we're going to, in brackets, put what we want the prompt to be. So we're going to ask source group which is the group that we're going to feed it. And then we're going to do a cheeky, and this is why it's always good to build macros on uh, on uh, on PC. We can use a bit of a cheeky copy and paste, and we're going to go empty group pool. Uh, and the reason that I've, I've just copied and pasted it is because most of the lines are exactly the same. We're just going to call it group dest. So we're creating two variables and essentially all variables do is just allow us to input information that we can then recall later dynamically. So if I run this macro right now, after giving it a name, we're going to call it fixture splitter. It's going to ask us two bits of information. It's going to ask us the source group, so it'll be number one, and then an empty group pool and we'll end up using 10 later. But now we've got those two bits of information in the system so we can start using them. So on our third line, we're going to start using that information. So we want the console to select group and we're going to make it AH group split. And then we're going to do a little semicolon and this allows us to run more than one thing in a, in a line. So we want it to select the group, then run an if. So we're going to go if fixture and we're going to go asterisk dot one so if it's a dot one part of a fixture we want it to store group and then we'll give it our variable of ah underscore group dest and then we're going to on the next line go label group give it our variable again ah underscore group dest and then here we're going to make we're going to just name it as dot one parts so that's what it's going to name the group so we'll run through what we've done here we've defined two user variables this one tells it uh, where we're sourcing it from this one's telling it where it's storing to and then what we're doing here is we're selecting group split so we're selecting the group and then it's saying if it's got a point 0.1 in it, store to group, uh, group dest, which is wherever that is. And then we're labeling that. The next line is we're doing something called an add user var. Now this is a little bit of basics mathematics, but essentially this allows us to do multiple lines of the macro. So we can go ah group dest equal one. 
So what that means, that if we fed it, let's say, uh, if we go back here to our example, if we fed it group number 10, it's then going to add a number, number to that without us having to prompt it. Because what we then do is we just simply re re repeat our three, four, and five lines over and over again. But we change it to go, if it's got a point two, store it there. And then we're going to copy out line to here. And we're going to go two parts. And the group destination then goes up one, just so that then it's storing in the next available group. And we'll repeat this process one more time. And modify it so that it's three parts. And then our group dest. And then just to the farm we'll go clear or so we don't leave anything in our programmer. Now, if we run the macro, we feed it our source group, which is number one, and we want all our empty group pools to start at 10. And now we can see that we've got one, two, and three parts. So if we come to screen two, we bring up our uh, lovely little group pool here. We can see that our one parts, if we go program only, are there. Our two parts, if I clear between doing that, are all there, so point two, and then our three parts are also there if we uh, if we select part three. And we can see that that's gone wrong. We can see that these are exactly the same because I didn't update the macro correctly. So if we go back into macros, we'll see that our third one is still set to if part two. So if I change it to if part three, that will work. If I add a bunch of delays to this of one second, which might be too long, we can actually get an idea of what happens. So I'm going to run the macro again, but we're going to store to 25 just so we can see. So we're going to go source group one, and we're going to start it at 25, and we'll see it selected the first bit, and it's slowly storing them. So we can see that it's created the group, then it's labeling it, then it's moving on. That's essentially the macro. So if we select our 600s, we know they go as high as 0.4. So let's uh, let's just jump in here and do a quick duplicate again. Get rid of that clear all line, don't need it for now. Dot four parts. And then for the fun of it, we'll also run the the thing, not that we really need it because we're not running it anymore in the macro, but it's always good to make sure that your numbers are the same. And then we'll uh, chuck in a clear all. And then we'll remove these uh, wait times. So if we go follow. Now if I run this macro again, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to write through those, it's going to prompt us. So if I go 1, 10, we can see that it's already got stuff there, and what does it want us to do? We want to overwrite it, so we go overwrite, 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 and now we've got our four parts as well. Anyway guys, really simple one. I want to start doing more like just explanations of macros and stuff, because it's really handy, uh, and it's really hard to explain uh, in words. So hopefully this video has been beneficial. Uh, of course, feel free to build the macro. The lines are fairly simple, and I'll put the like the main line of it, that group line, in the description as well. Thanks for watching.